Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler teaching communication systems at Idaho State University. In this series of videos, we're going to be discussing another form of bandwidth efficient amplitude modulation, which is the vestigial sideband. In this series of videos, we are using the reference text, Modern Digital and Analog Communication Systems. So if you're not in my class, you can follow along by checking out this, this textbook. So let's consider uh, the vestigial uh, sideband by first thinking about some of the other methods of uh, bandwidth efficient modulations that we've discussed. So first, in the previous video, we imagined a, a voice message which had a pretty low uh, DC component to it. Uh, so not very much low frequency components. And for this method, we were able to use a selective filtering method because it, it didn't really matter if, if we damaged this lower part of the the frequency components too much because those don't actually have that much effect on the human understanding of the signal. But what if we had another signal that might look like this, where it does have significant DC components? Well, then we might need to do something else. So let's look at, first we had the DSBSC modulation. This was the first type of modulation we discussed, and this was not an efficient method of modulation, right? We had to use uh, 2B amount of bandwidth when we uh, did the modulation this way. So then the next thing we said was, well, what if we were able to do a, a single sideband, right? And so we, we discussed the, the upper sideband. So what if you were able to just half the amount of, of bandwidth you're using by transmitting just one of the sidebands? And so this one is what would happen if you had a upper sideband message. Then we discussed another method, the, the QAM method, the quadrature amplitude modulation, where we sent two messages. And now we're going to discuss one final bandwidth efficient modulation scheme, which would be to uh, transmit a kind of compromise solution. So what if we transmitted a little more than 1B worth of bandwidth, but we're still able to save quite a bit of bandwidth? So we, we transmit a little bit extra, um, but we still don't go all the way up to this 2B. So this is a compromise solution, and this is a solution that has been put into practice in a number of uh, traditional areas. So this method is called the vestigial sideband. Now this word vestigial, right, this might mean ha have some kind of meaning of uh, something that's not used or redundant. So maybe you've heard the term uh, vestigial tail or something like this in biology to refer to uh, an organ or appendix that humans still have but is no longer relevant. So this would be like your appendix. Okay, so this is where this idea of vestigial sideband comes from. This part here, right, we might call this vestigial because it's not useful but we still transmit it anyways. So what are the advantages? So this vestigial sideband has the advantages of DSBSC and single sideband. Uh, you're able to uh, use filtering to remove most of the double sideband, right? So we're able to remove most of what was here, right? We're able to get rid of that. It has only about 25 to 30% more bandwidth than our ideal single sideband. And it gradually removes, so using some kind of gradual filter, it gradually removes that lower or upper sideband. It has the advantages of being able to be recovered synchronously, so you can use coherent demodulation in conjunction with a complementary filter. And we're going to have a video in this series that discusses what the complementary filter is and how to design that. And you could also uh, recover this signal with an envelope if you send in a little bit of extra carrier power. So this could be recovered uh, with an envelope or it could be recovered synchronously. The vestigial sideband amplitude modulation scheme would look something like this. First, you have your message and your carrier come together to create a modulation, right? And so this is where we've been traditionally. Then this is where it gets different. You would add in a first filter, and this would be a bandpass filter. So you would have some kind of bandpass filter 
that would remove some of these portions at this point. It would pass through the channel, and then at your demodulation, you would apply your carrier frequency to get some signal E of T, and then you would pass this E of T through a low pass filter, and this one is H out. And when this passes through this, you would eventually be able to recover your message. And so the key to vestigial sideband amplitude modulation is designing these two filters so that they're complementary and allow you to recover your original message. So these are the two complementary filters that VSB amplitude modulation relies on.